Hopefully everybody got a message. I, I tried uh, the the at everyone for the first time, despite the warning Discord gave me not to not to bother everybody. But hopefully we'll get uh, the notification thing worked out. That should be a good way to get notifications. I got one from the calendar as well, reminding me that I'm about to stream. <laughs> uh oh, how's everybody doing? Who's here so far? So far, so good. What do we got? Oh, let's put on the counter. 26. How's it going, everybody? Good morning. Chat seems delayed. I don't see any chat. Don't see any chat. I got one from Just Ring Dang Dolt saying thanks for the heads up. You're welcome. But that's it. Anybody else here? How's everybody doing? All right. Oh, you know what I got to do? Here I thought I had everything all worked out, but I don't. Forgive me if uh, you hear the girls screaming and crying in the background. They seem to be torturing each other a lot today. So there, there's a lot of screaming and yelling going on. I still don't have any chat. What the heck? Huh. Oh my gosh, there it is. Now, like, everything pops up all at once. Goodness. Goodness, goodness. All right. Hey, Charlie, how's it going? Rob. Hey, Ronnie. Phil. We got the gang. We got Ian. Vitality Guru. Gura. Not guru. Cool. Dennis from NorCal. Tech Talk. Bobby the IT guy. Hey, Bobby. I still haven't followed your instructions on that on that Alexa thing, but I got it. I'll share it with everybody this morning. Good morning from Seattle. Stone Wallace is here. Jeff Hammer's here. Am I calling you slow? I'm calling some there's some kind of delay. That was such a weird that was a weird delay. Wasn't it? Manish from India. Awesome. What am I going to teach you today? So today's going to be a lot about, man, this has got a funky delay on this chat. It's like all of a sudden it all pops up at once. Um, we're going to talk about Tasmoda a bit today. I've got a, I've got a plug strip to talk about and I spent a lot of time yesterday working on motors and stuff, but then who knows what else we'll talk about. I don't. <laughs> I'm sure it'll all, it'll all come together. Goodness sakes. Oh man. Oh man. All right. It's like, it's like nothing, 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 and then boom, I get 20 messages. That is so weird. What if we put the chat on the screen? Is that going to work? Maybe. Maybe. You guys seeing that? I don't know if that's more disruptive than helpful, but... I don't know how much you can even read it. You like the background? Very festive. I like doing the festive background thing. Might do that from time to time, being New Year's Eve-ish almost and all. Looks like my Twitch count isn't working. Oh, is that right? Let's try and refresh it. Sometimes it needs a refresh. There it goes. There it goes. I got the Stream Deck doing some cool stuff. Montana, quick question. How much data does a Sonoff use in 24 hours? So you mean, well, <clears throat> that's a good question. If you're... If you're talking internal, you're talking external, right? You want to know if it's, uh, how much is it sending out to their servers and such. If you've, if you've flashed it with Tasmoda, zero, none, because it's all internal, uh, just inside your network. So it shouldn't be using any, any data at all. But if, uh, if you're still using their, um, you know, the Sonoff, uh, firmware, I, then I have no idea. I have no idea how much it's sending and how, and how often. Insanity in the room. Here it goes. All right. Cog Whistle, thank you for following. Both of us are sad today for our football teams. I'm very sad. I really wanted to celebrate with your, your little pixel thing. We may still show that off today, Paul. That thing's super cool. All right, Bobby. Let's... Every once in a while, I'll refresh that viewer thing. See, what, see if it's working for us. All right. Portugal. Okay, cool. There it goes. Let's see, who else? Michigan, hey Eric. Sad day yesterday, what the heck happened? Morning from Phoenix. How do you get on the stream calendar? Oh, Sean, you wanna be on the stream calendar? Just send me a message in Discord and I will add your email and then you can put on, you can post your own stream times and such. And that goes for anybody else too. Let me know if you um, can't wait your 100,000 YouTube button someday. That will be so cool, won't it? Let's see if we can get it done before the end of the year. What do you think? Do you think we could get there? Matt, I'm only at like 23 so far. 23,000. But we'll see. We'll try. 
let me know if you guys like the chat on the window or don't like the chat on the window. We'll 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 monkey around with it a little bit today. Belgium, Netherlands. Hey, how's it going? Using been using ES Perna and have to say it seems less buggy than Tasmoda. And over the air update is like a dream. I know you love Tasmoda, but what are your views? I need to try it, David. I do need to try it. Tasmoda has has evolved quite a bit in the past year, um, and I still like it. They're still adding a lot of features, but. Um, there's things like like motor control um and yeah there has been some bugs i you know i don't know that i don't know for sure if esperna or esp easy are without those bugs they could be um but they also could not be so i don't know why is that oh is it going from the top is the newest messages at the top okay the newest message is at the top that's what happens with the chat all right what do I make a living from, Avi? Uh, doing anesthesia. God, those girls are being really loud. They're being really loud. You let me know if you can hear them. If it's too much. I'll go spank them. <laughs> Did anybody do mysensors.org combined with home system? I signed up for it a long time ago, but I have not, uh, have not used it. I haven't used it. All right. All right, so let me let me start out with showing you what. Let's see. Yeah. Let me start out by answering these comments on Discord. <laughs> All right. So let's do this. All right. You can hear me without problems. Great. Spanking, use a head mic. Yeah, I could do that too. I mean, I could do that too. I like my mic though. It's so nice. Makes me sound like a DJ. Not as much as Frank. Okay, let's do some stuff. So what I wanted to show you today is this guy. I'll pop the link in here. We're going to look at this plug strip because it is cool. And I got it tasmotized yesterday and took a little work to do but it's work it, it's good it's good so here we go this is the guy this is we're gonna bring this over here too because we're gonna get into that oh and we're gonna show you on the desk with well we'll show the desk camera in a minute all right so anyways this is it it's a plug strip it's got an esp 8266 in it it's actually a uh esp 12e or something like that you know it's the little chip i'll show you some pictures of the inside in a minute but anyways 25 bucks you get three plug strips and two usb uh ports and they're all switched inside so it's got three relays plus i'm not exactly sure how it switches the usb power to the usb but they're all switched so um what it looked like on the inside is here we go I took some pictures while I was doing it and then I put it back together when I was done because I wanted to use it. <laughs> so, but here's what you got on the inside. You got three relays, power supply. Uh, here's your USB ports. This is the, um, the ESP chip over here and you got one button down here and then the three places to plug that in. So let's get a closer look at the ESP chip. This is what the ESP chip is right here. And the, um, I'll show you where that where to connect for flashing too, but essentially you got access to some ports on this side. The only one you need access to that you don't have access to is the power. The power one is down here. You could get to it. It's not too bad. I just went. There's also a place on the back of the board, so I just went to that. Rotate it. Oh, closed my pictures. Here's another picture of it. So this right here is voltage. I think that's ground. And then you've got uh, like RX and TX down here. I put it back together and then I, I went to look at it today. This is the back side, the underside of it here. So these are the parts. This is where the relay uh, signal comes in. You can, so you can get an idea of the, the soldering and stuff. You probably wouldn't do too bad. To, oh, thank you. Thank you, Miko. Hey, you can type something in with Super Chat. And actually, I even, I even did the... Um, I even did the mask thing. I got the mask thing work, working. I could even show you. Do you want to see what happens? This is a... Oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> Every time I hit this button, it does a random one. 
John didn't really donate $96. That's a test. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I don't know how long that's going to stay. Hopefully it won't stay for very long. <laughs> it's kind of scary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right. So there's the bottom of that one. Let's see where else we can look here. So once I got it wired up, it looked like this. So here we've got the TX, the RX ground. Oh, this was GPIO zero. That's important. The switch is, is not actually connected to GPIO zero. Crazy enough, one of these is actually attached to GPIO zero. So, but GPIO zero is right here, so you can solder onto there, ground here, and then on the back side. Hopefully, I took a picture of the back side. Yep, right here. The back side you can see right there. Um, oh, zoom in. Oh, what? 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 I didn't even know I could rotate through them like this. Sweet. There we go. And then zoom in. And then scroll. No scroll. No scroll. Oh, goodness. Anyways, whatever. There, right here, there's a there's one pin that's inside this little box. You can solder on there. That's for your three volts. So then with that, you can connect it all to your... Um, you can connect it all to your... Uh, help me with the word. <laughs> your... Your adapter. So this was just the video, the quick video of actually flashing it. So here's my USB adapter. I've got this wire that's uh, on GPIO zero. I just touched it to the outside of this USB uh, port because that's ground. And so when I had that grounded, then I plugged it in and that was it. Worked first try. No kidding. Worked first try. So that was that. Uh, and then I think I just took a couple more pictures of it when it was, yeah, just up close soldered pictures of it. But no big deal. So RX, oh sorry, TX RX GPIO zero is in this middle one, ground, and then three volts on on the back. And then, well, let's look at this. This is what it actually looks like. My webcam looks a little bit laggy today, but this is what it actually looks like. And yes, it runs on the Tuya app. Thank you, FTDI adapter. You got it. It actually runs on the Tuya app, and the way it works uh, natively isn't bad. This button will toggle through the different. Um, so it'll plug, turn this one on the first time and this one on the second time and this one on and it'll turn each of these on individually as well with this button. When I Now that it's flashed with Tasmoda, it doesn't do that. This button, as I've got it hooked up right now and I could probably fix it and do some, thing, do some more stuff to it. Um, <laughs> flashy first try. You can do it hard top. You can do it. You can do it. You just got to do a couple hundred. <laughs> You'll get there. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, so right now this button will only do this first relay for me with Tasmoda. Um, Travis made the suggestion you could, I could do a hold and, and put some rules in Tasmoda that would do different things. But what I did instead was just set it up in Home Assistant. Well, let's look at Tasmoda first. So what I had to do, and I think this is important. This was somebody, this question came up. I'm going to turn this off. This question came up yesterday too, where somebody said, um, they had a device, I don't remember what it was, the S20 or something, and they weren't sure, they were trying to turn off the LED. There, there's two LEDs on that device, I guess, and they were trying, they had one of them that they were able to turn off, but not the other one. And so, um, so they, uh, but they wanted to know what that other, what that other, what pin was controlling that other LED. And uh, with this strip, what I tried to do initially was I got my multimeter out and I put it on, uh, continuity mode and I just went down and was you know tapping the pins and tapping on the on the board and trying to find where everything was and honestly I didn't have much success with that method I, it's worked for me before and it should work but for whatever reason uh, with that thing yesterday it didn't didn't work um, maybe I just wasn't making good enough contact or whatever um, but anyways what I ended up doing was um, once I got it flashed with Tasmoda I went into the configuration and configure module and set it to generic. And what that did is gave me access to all of these different pins, right? And I, what I, what I did initially was I went through and just set them all, well, as many as I could as relays. And when I set it as a relay, even if it was the light, when I set it as the relay and, and saved it, then it would give me the, um, it would give me the, 
the option in the front menu here to turn on and off a bunch of things. And I could turn on and off the light with that. So we can actually, we can actually play with that. I can show you how that, how that works. So let's go back in there for a minute, configure module. And I already know that these two here are the LEDs because of my, the way that I, um, figured it out yesterday. So, but what I'll do for now for the, for a demonstration is I will change these to relays. So let's see, I've got five relays on there now. So we'll change this one to number six. We'll change this to relay six and we'll change this one to relay seven. Now I didn't know what these were initially. What I did was just process of elimination. I went through and assigned these different pins as relays. And then I went to the front and just started pushing on them. Okay, so we'll save that. That's what Travis does. ESP easy rule is easier. Could be. It's probably time. I said it for a long time I was going to relay input is just digital right high or digital right low and then adds a button. While you're in Tasmoda mode, do you know a way for it to automatically kill the output if it becomes disconnected from the MQTT broker? Good question. I don't know. Does anybody, can anybody answer that for John? I don't know that answer. Okay, so now you can see here to the LEDs, and I should be able to turn them on and off with this. There you go. So that red one is on and off. And here's this should be the blue one, on and off. So that's how I figured it out. And then when I go through these, this toggles the first one, second one, third one. And then the USBs don't have relays, but they go on and off right there with that. Oh, that's what I wanted to show you too. So now you can check this out if you can see it. Can you see it? Let's make it so you can see it. Oops, upside down. Turn it around. All right. So this is now, this is also my HA switch plate. And when I turn these on and off, you can see they turn on and off on there, right? And if you want this, I'll share this with everybody in a few minutes, but this, uh, this is page six on HA switch plate. And, um, I have a demo now. This was one, this one was blank. Um, Luma didn't have a demo for us. So I made a demo, uh, that will respond to the colors that you put into the user interface and, uh, it'll control eight different things, whatever eight different things you want. So I'll post that. I'll post that in the gist here in a minute. So right, let's put this thing back to where it was because I like it. What, what, uh, what am I missing in chat? Did you guys, uh, you guys have any questions about this guy? And I th think, I can't remember which one I had. This one was LED one. And then this one was LED two, I think. Cool. So what are the red and blue lights? Just lights or do they serve a function? So that's just, they, the red one shows, tells you that the power is just on and um, that it's, that it's connected. And then the blue one tells you that there's a relay on. It doesn't tell you which one or anything. It's just on or off. So, so like right now it's connected to power. So it's got the red one on. And then anytime I turn on one of these, Oh, now I got them switched. When I put it back in, I switched them. <laughs> okay. I put them in wrong. Oh, goodness sakes. Oops. Configuration module. So I must have put. That must be relay two and relay one. And I actually think I had to do it inverted, but I can't remember for sure. We'll just put, do it this way and see what happens. Again, it's all about see what happens, right? What was the device? Getting here late. Sorry, Caleb. The device is this guy here. The device is this guy here. And actually, you know, for the price, I got to say, I, at first I was kind of like, oh, 25 bucks for a plug strip. That seems like a lot. But when you're getting, you're getting five switchable devices, you're getting five devices, five smart switches, essentially, uh, things you can plug into this and, and turn on and off for 25 bucks. That's not bad. That's not bad. So that's, I mean, you're, now you're into the, you're into the Sonoff basic price range, right? Where it's $5 for a smart switch of some kind. Plus this is simple. You can plug things in and out pretty easy. So it's pretty cool. Uh, 
just put an 8% coupon on this for the on coupon deals topic on Discord. Oh, oh, cool. Thanks, Adrian. Adrian just put a coupon on this. So if you guys go to the, there's a coupon deals topic in Discord. And Adrian's got some ways to find discounts. So there you go. There's the discount. Sweet. Thanks, Adrian. All right. I like these. I actually have to say, um, I, I would buy more of these. This for, for putting on my desk. So this is going to go on when I make a new desk. I see you guys talking about lumber and building things and such. Um, I want to build a desk, a workbench, a real good one. And um, having something like this kind of built into it where I've got switchable USB ports plus some switchable plugs for things like soldering iron and hot glue gun and stuff like that. Is there a EU edition? I'm pretty sure there is. I'm pretty sure if you went, um, this is the US warehouse, I guess. So if you go and other stores have them. In fact, Travis has, uh, was talking to me about, he's done one that has a, it's different. Um, the USB ports aren't, aren't switchable, but there's four of these. So great for the workbench. Yeah. I, I was that what you have too? All right, darn it, I'm sold. Chinese fire trap, here we come. <laughs> uh, I should, uh, I, I need um, a Dr. Z's brand um, fire extinguisher, don't you think? <laughs> Is Frank here? I want to know if Frank's here. Frank Frank got me doing something tonight. And uh, what do you think of this? Whoa. <laughs> Oh man. Hey, did you see that Frank? That was for you, man. That was for you. And actually I even did a couple other things too. We got some fireworks. Pretty awesome. <laughs> and then I actually set this one up. Watch this. So this one's for you, Luma here. We'll turn this back on. And then, uh, we got some of this. This is when Luma hooks his up. <laughs> <laughs> that's good times that's good times thanks for the tip frank that was awesome <laughs> okay oh man yes that's how i lost my hair that's how i get rid of my hair it's uh, i just burn it off <laughs> zap it thank you so much for yesterday's support your garage now works you are you are so welcome rick you are so welcome i'm glad i'm glad we got it working for you so all right we were looking at this plug strip right uh, Wi-Fi plug strip, and you guys wanted a, a, U, a European mode, European style Wi-Fi plug. Whoa, whoa. What was that? <laughs> Everything just went crazy. I lost everything. <laughs> that was awesome. I wonder what happened. Okay. I lost my desktop. Sweet. Oh, fantastic. I wonder what the heck happened. I tried to type. Uh, now you can't see. Oh, sweet. I broke it. Turned his stream off and finally blew up. <laughs> there we go again. Ah! That was my favorite. I really like that one. This one was Frank's. He likes the missile. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I wonder what, uh, what we're going to do about that. Oh, sweet. I don't have any displays. Awesome. That's great. All right. We got nothing. Well, that's it for today. Have a nice afternoon, everybody. <laughs> uh, what secrets will be showing off today? Apparently right now, nothing because my, uh, my monitor disappeared and uh, we're going to work on trying to get that back. There we go. No, not that one. I can turn that one back on. Not that one. Well, maybe what we're going to have to do then is switch monitors today. That is so weird. I wonder why it did that. But all right, here we go. We're going to switch monitors today. Now, now is probably when I am going to reveal all my secrets. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, that is so lame. I don't even know what I pushed. Pushed something in a way where everything went. I got some hotkey dialed in somewhere that blew up, blew up everything. Can't get this to go any bigger. Nothing like troubleshooting a stream in the middle of the stream, right, Frank? 
All right. That's so crazy. Type explorer. My source is see if my source is hidden. So this thing was taken over. Um, I need to switch off, switch back. Hmm. No. For some reason, it just doesn't want that monitor to come back up. Oh, well. Oh, now the chat's ready to display. Oh, perfect. Yes, thank you. Dumb thing. All right. Well, back to this. I think what happened though was some something has taken over my keyboard. I've got I've got something like I can't type the letter G. If I type if I try oh now I can see look at that. oh now I can. All right, well that's fantastic. <laughs> what would it be without some sort of technical difficulty? It wouldn't be a wouldn't be a Doctor Z stream without some technical difficulties. Wi-Fi plug strip. Why do I get LEDs? There we go. I don't know if this is the one. Yeah, this looks different. Mm -hmm. Anyways, you guys can find it, I'm sure. Look for that brand, Wi-Fi plug. Problem is I like looking right ahead and seeing things. Yeah, this isn't it. This isn't it. All right. Anyways, what are we doing today, Daniel? So we just went through this. Um, we just went through. Now everything is all in the wrong places. I had it all lined up right where I wanted. Now I'm sure going to leak something at this point <laughs> since I had all my things right where I wanted them and now they're all gone. Do not skip. Here we go. So we talked about this. We talked about this plug strip here. Control Alt Shift. Oh, maybe, maybe one of your Control Alt or Shift keys was sticking. Could be. Could be. So we were talking about that plug strip. Um, <laughs> hackers getting hacked, maybe. <laughs> All right. I think you need to reinstall Windows. Oh, gosh. Yeah, let me just pause. We'll just pause the stream for a few minutes while we reinstall Windows. No big deal, right? <laughs> I wonder if this thing is working now. I can't even see where my stream is. Okay, that thing's working. And then if we... Oh. If we do this. Yeah. Now we get blue lights. Okay. So now the LEDs are back to what they were supposed to do. And even number four and five, which are the Wi-Fi ones, those are working too for that. So, yay. All right. Disaster avoided. We'll troubleshoot the display thing after that. So, all right. What's going on in the chat? What the heck did I miss? Lots of cool stuff, I'm sure. All right. How about revealing the secret flash pattern on the Sonoff uh, when it's in flash mode? <laughs> It need to have. All right. Two days ago feels like forever. Finally broke your network after exposing your passwords too many times. Could have been. <laughs> Could have been. I don't know what it is. That, that's kind of weird. I mean, I tried to. I tried to type "Good morning, everybody" or something like that in Discord, and every time I typed a G, I got this other funny menu thing showing up. So I don't know. Anyways, I worked. I worked a while on that yesterday. I like that plug strip. We'll have to do that again. Have a good stream. See ya. Taking off already? Can't blame you. Oh, love a good stream. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, it did come with Tuya installed, OG. Yes, it did. It comes with Tuya installed. And I actually debated because I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen when I put Tasmoda on it. I figured, you know, Tas there, there was no module ready to go in Tasmoda that was going to say, this is this relay, that's that relay, that's that relay, you know, put the right buttons in the right places. So it wasn't going to, so I, I was going to, I wasn't sure what it was going to take potentially to make it usable again. 
So I flash it with Tasmoda and now I don't have access to switch any of the relays. Um, you know, I didn't know how it was going to turn out. So I hesitated a little bit and I thought about it and I thought, man, do I really want to do this? Cause I could just use it with Tuya and it would be okay. <clears throat> but I said, oh, what the heck? Uh, it'll be fun. And I'm not out much if I, if I ruin it, but, uh, it worked out fine. It worked out fine. It wasn't that, wasn't that bad. It took a little troubleshooting, a little figuring out which pins were going to which uh, components on the board. But, you know, by, by setting them all as relays in Tasmoda and switching them on and off and just observing what happened, I stuck my multimeter in the ports to see, you know, when I turned on a certain, um, a certain one, which, you know, what, which one of those plug spots turned on, it worked and, and it was okay. So I'm glad I did it now because now it's all tasmatized. So, oh boy, let's get started. What are we waiting for? Wait a minute. <laughs> Does that fancy stream button thing have a program that manages the keys? I wonder if it's affecting your keyboard. Could be. Could be. Hey, OC Dwa, how's it going? Good morning. Good morning, Glenn. You didn't find the G point. No, I didn't. I did not. <laughs> uh, uh, functionality did you... What functionality did I gain by using Tasmoda, Bobby says. Good, good question. Good question. Uh, really just... Um, the ability to use it without somebody else's cloud. I think that's probably the biggest thing that you gain. Uh, I, I am pretty happy with the Tuya stuff. They've been working fine. I mean, I have a dozen of those little plugs around the house and uh, I use them with the Tuya app. So um, I think sometimes they're delayed a little. I may have something to do with their servers or the you know, the transmission from their servers back and, and out again, but, uh, overall it's not too bad. So I think that's probably the biggest gain you have from, from using Tasmoda. It was initially, uh, for me, the reason to use Tasmoda or anything else was because, um, you weren't able to use the Sonoff devices in home assistant unless you changed the firmware. Now there's that home assistant component, or sorry, that Sonoff, that new Sonoff custom component that we showed off in the last stream. So that's not as much of an issue. So you could still use Sonoff devices now with their stock firmware in, in home assistant. Um, and to you, there's tons and tons of devices. Like I, most of them don't advertise as being compatible with to you, but I would challenge you anytime you buy any of these kind of crazy, weird little brands of smart whatever's try try attaching them with your Tuya app and I uh, bet you can in a lot of cases when even if, like this one this one it was supposed to have its own app you know you you shoot it with your phone on the QR code and it was going to give you uh their app and and start the setup for you whatever I just turned it on held the button went to the Tuya app and it and it was compatible with Tuya and the Tuya people want to work really closely with home assistant um developers and such so using Tuya natively, I can't blame you. If you, if you don't want to use the cloud at all for anything, then yeah, you can switch it to Tasmoda or something else. Um, but the Tuya app, there's really nothing wrong with it other than it's somebody else's server for the most part. And you, and so that just adds one more point of failure potentially, or a point of data, um, leaking when you're, you're giving them your information about when your lights are on and off and whatever else you give them. So <clears throat> yeah, major bonus curmudgeon says. The other thing is, um, so, so and then so, I think it was Bobby also that asked, what what functionality do you lose? You can probably put it back. There's like Travis was saying with some rules or something in Tasmoda, you can change it. But uh, the ability to push this button and toggle through which of these is turned on. So, you know, the button function, you could probably find some ways in, in Tasmoda to change this onboard button. But for right now, this onboard button, um, it only triggers the first relay now, where with the Tuya app, it it triggered several of them. If first turned on one and then it turned on the next one, turned on the next one. I don't know if I'd want that. I think what I would want is push it, push it once, turns everything on, push it again, turns everything off. I think that's the functionality that I would put in for this button. So still a lot of traffic across the router when using cloud devices causes network congestion. And somebody was asking about, you know, data. 
I don't, I can't imagine it's very much, but for us, um, you know, we do have a data limit even on our home internet, uh, connection, our ISP puts a limit on there. So when we, you know, if I'm sending thousands of messages a day to, uh, China and back, I, that probably would mess with my data limit at least a little bit, maybe probably not very much. These are small little messages. So I don't, can't imagine doc talking about data leaking. <laughs> I, I went through some serious, uh, steps, uh, after the uh, secrets file leak on the last stream to try and make that not happen again. Uh, Frank walked me through and I got, so right now I'm, I'm not going to, um, let's see, I'm going to put it up on the other monitor because <laughs> I, uh, I don't even trust myself, but I think if I look at my, if I look at my, uh, file tree here. If I open up a folder in Visual Studio Code, oop, Home Assistant config. Come on now, where is it? Yes, perfect. It's working. All right. So here you go. Get your, get your screenshots ready. <laughs> I guess it's time. All right. So this is what I did actually. So I set up this, um, it's an extension here that Frank told me about that is, I don't remember which one it is. I'd have to look at my extensions, but it's, it's a git ignore something. And, uh, so I put a git ignore file in my main home assistant config folder. And then when I open, actually I could probably there's the git ignore file. And so now if you look here, like secrets isn't even showing up on this list. So I can't even click secrets out of this list to open it up here, even on accident. So I kind of took that feature away from myself. So I think that's a good solution. That particular day when I opened my secrets file, it was actually in the IDE. So Frank, I need something like this for IDE as well. I need, what I need is to never, ever be able to access my own secrets file. That's the only way to keep it safe. <laughs> okay. Oh man. I made it easier. The passwords are now posted on his website. <laughs> Happy accident. Time for passwords. Uh, is there no smartphone app direct for Hassio? There is, or when for iPhone there is. I don't think there is for Android though. <laughs> delete it. Wait, I'll send you a screenshot you can share. Okay. Of what? Of my passwords? <laughs> Sonoff equals most cost effective, but may not necessarily be the best. That's true, Bobby. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. I think it's a good value, but you're definitely, you know, you're cheap. It's cheap and, and, um, it's not going to be great. So no more accidental streams and now no more secrets. <laughs> what else will we lose in 2019? <laughs> um, all right. Uh, it's better to set up a separate network for home automations and regular traffic. Yeah. Why not just upload it? Oh, Frank just sent me a picture. This is going to open right here in front of everybody too. Oh, that's in the IDE. Cool. Okay. I'll have to mess with that. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, haven't they released a dev app for Android? Maybe there used to be one, but I don't know. I'm not, a, I don't have an Android phone. I'm in the, I'm on the Apple crack. Do RF door sensors keep current state when connection is lost, like when Home Assistant restarts? Um, mine seem to. I would assume that that's going to be a setting in your RF bridge. That'll probably, if you do like switch retain one and power retain one in your RF bridge, that should, that should do it. Oh, that was VS code. Oh, okay. running in a browser. Oh, Frank, you 
you genius. So, so Frank has, we now have an add on for VS code that'll run like IDE. Oh, of course we do. Why not? Why not? Thank you, Rob. Rob, Rob concurs. It depends on the retained settings in the RF bridge. So still testing. Okay. We won't release it yet to the world. RF sensor only sends an update when something changes. Not ready for shipment. <laughs> I love that you say you're on an Apple crack, but you're using Google Wi-Fi. Yeah, I can't. I'm, I'm trying to get off the Apple crack, but it's, uh, I, I started the, I, we, there's no way we can get off the iPhones at this point in my family. It's just, we're too, they're too ingrained in everything that we do and the kids and my wife, everybody's iPhone crazy. So we won't ever be getting off. I tried a couple of times early, you know, years ago, but it just didn't stick to switch to uh, Android. So, <clears throat> but as far as, uh, you know, other devices, I certainly, I don't have any of the other things like, what else do they have? Like, yeah, like their Wi-Fi stuff or um, Apple TV and whatever. Try not to do too much, too much with them because it's expensive. I do have a MacBook, which I love. <laughs> Does anyone know of a 433 temp sensor compatible with the RF bridge? That's a good question, Sam. I don't know, but uh, who does? Let's see. Anybody know of, uh, we got 100 and, oh, 250 people here. Wow. Refresh that too. Just make sure it's still accurate. Yeah. Fantastic. Some people like overpaying for things. <laughs> it, was about, it was all about Apple phones too, but I don't like the face ID causing them to completely remove touch ID. Oh, did they do that? I'm still on an iPhone seven, man. I don't even know how old it is. That thing's got to be four years old or something. I don't know how old it is. It's old, but it still works. Yay. Thank you. Twimmer. Thanks for following. Uh, Got a Sonoff Basic labeled Sonoff RF R2 power and I can't get it into flash mode. So Aza, was, that's the new one that has the black wires across it, right? I have one somewhere. We, I flashed that one on a couple, a couple live streams ago. I don't know exactly which one, but go back through some of the live streams over the 12 days of Christmas there. And there was one where I got one of those from um, Fatty, Fatty Cat, who, dude, I still have your clip too. If you're watching, I still, you got to come get it or we got to meet up and I can give you your, your flashing clip. Um, but anyways, yeah, I did it on there and it wasn't too bad. It was, uh, I mean, it worked until I, <laughs> until I unplugged it <laughs> halfway. <through. laughs> I was like, yeah, see how easy that was. Boop. And I pulled it out of the computer as it was halfway through <laughs> flashing. But other than that, it worked great. <laughs> It was the Alexa Texas Street. Oh, you did see it, but you still can't get it into flash mode, huh? Interesting. Well, uh, I would try some of the standard stuff. It could have you flashed before. You must have flashed other things before. Um, faulty FTDI adapter is is uh, a frequent culprit. RXTX being reversed is a frequent culprit. Um, not getting it correctly into flash mode, like you know, with the button press, is another frequent uh, culprit. And I can't remember what else there is. I think those are the main things. <laughs> if I tried dropping it from three feet, you flashed others before. That's weird. I wonder what's up. <laughs> Having trouble with ESP flash tool. Device is properly connected and in programming mode. Yeah. Um, I definitely... I, the oh wrong voltage that's another possibility you bet a lot of points of failure to keep track of yeah sometimes you should hold the button while flashing maybe maybe chris says i i haven't i usually let it go but um holding the buttons maybe not a bad thing to try uh, sometimes you just got to keep trying to try what was i flashing that i had driver problems that's another possible one yeah so you know that's a kind of an ftdi problem what was what was i trying to flash the other day that was just giving me fits What was it? it? Wasn't oh, it was a S thirty one. It was an S thirty one. I did I did a bunch of these. I did a flashed a couple of these S thirty ones that I got, um, and uh, I don't know what it was. It just took forever. I just don't know if I was not the connections just weren't being made quite right. On the S thirty one, you have to solder wires on to the to the 
board or I did just to make it so that I could connect. And I think maybe one of my soldering points wasn't great. And so sometimes would make contact and then would lose contact. And um, so that could be it. It's not showing at all. Would the COM port show in Flash Easy when the FTDI adapter is plugged in the computer? Yeah, it should. If it's not showing, then you may have your FTDI, FTDI adapter maybe maybe dead. It may have given up the ghost because it should show up. Um, I'm pretty sure we can hook mine up and I can check that real quick. Boy. So let's just plug this in without any um, oops, plug strip now without anything. So no Sonoff connected to it or no other device, just the FTDI adapter plugged in. And then we'll start up flash easy and we'll see if it shows us what we want to see. We'll bring this over here so you guys can actually see since things are all switch rooty. Yeah, so there it is. See, it showed up as COM4. So if you're plugging in your FTDI, FTDI adapter and then starting flash easy and you're not getting you're not getting a port up here except COM1, then I think you might want to try a new FTDI adapter. Hate to tell you that, but that could be the could be the problem. Those things do die. What is the FTDI adapter? That's the USB to serial, um, USB to serial adapter. Uh, do I have one handy? And these are, uh, you know, they're cheap. They're they're inexpensive, and so they often, um, they often die. Even to the even on the best of us, I've been pretty fortunate. Mine uh, is still the first one I ever bought. The one that I use all the time is still the first one I ever bought. I do have one that somebody sent me that I was gonna try, but I have not yet tried. That's not the one I have. Looks like they don't sell the one I have anymore. Well, here's a two pack anyway. So anyways, it's just this is the FTDI adapter. So. This plugs into your computer and then this plugs into the Sonoff for flashing. So that's what that's what that is. All right. I missed a couple I missed a couple people subscribing or something, so thank you. I heard it bing. Um link for Android native app if anyone wants to try it. Oh if did you can you post the link? Who is that? Link for Android native app if anyone wants to try it. Remodel. That's cool how you made the Greek symbols in there. If there's a, if, yeah, post a link. If you, if it doesn't work, I'll approve it. What chip is on the FTDI? You're asking me, you're asking him probably. This one says 1528C GS17082. Whatever that is. Hey, M14T. Thanks, man. So I wanted to show you fellas what uh, the setup looked like for that switch for that. Um, just real quick, I'll show you the uh, the home assistant uh, config stuff for that plug strip. OK, uh, it's nothing special. It's nothing special at all. But this is what I ended up doing. I got number one this is relay number one relay number two relay number three and then the usb port one and usb port two um, and then oh and then the other part that i wanted to show you was in the this was the more important part actually was in the this number six page six buttons. So this guy, and I'll, I'll grab all this and make a gist real quick. Cause this is Luma. This is an, an example of with stuff filled in, I guess some of this is irrelevant now. Cause, uh, but anyways, this is an example for that page for page six on the HA switch plate. So we're going to paste this in here. Uh, H A S P 
page six buttons dot yaml create public so this took me a little bit of this took me a little bit of goofing around and not really goofing around it wasn't hard it was just uh it was easier i just felt like it would be easier to have uh somebody you know have it together so you can just go through and just change your the um what devices you know what devices you're switching and what you want it to say on your buttons so so there you go there you go paste that in there for anybody that wants to use page six because i like that page that's one of my that's one of my favorite pages you've got eight access to eight buttons that you can do anything you want with so i like that page so there you go all right someone know why after update tasmoda 6.4 some devices begin to disconnect or disappear Jose, uh, I have heard a lot of people having trouble with that. I would guess that you'll get a couple of answers here in the chat for people who know the reason. It's got something, I think, got something to do with board manager versions, um, but I don't know 100% for sure. I, I ended up, when I flashed that um, plug strip, I actually went back to like 6.2.1, I think. So that's what I did. Just use the same FTDI device as Dr. Z's. It's, it's glorious. Thanks for the tip. Is that the one that I, I, you know, I don't know if they're selling that exact same one, but um, I'll drop a link. I'll drop a link. I'm a link, I'm a link dropper. Put the link in the Discord for reference. Okay, cool. Thank you. Where'd you drop it? In the live stream? Yep, there you go. Okay, cool. I'll put it here too. So this is a, uh, did that show up in the chat? Maybe it did. There you go. What's the discord server? If you just do this, you should get some information about the discord server. Oh no, just got the live notice, son of a gun. Thought we had that fixed. Anybody knows who installed the PY package error? No matching distribution found. Ah, nope. Sorry, Victor. Not I don't know that. 5.14 is the most trustworthy for Sonoffs. I had a lot of I had a lot of uh, success with 5.14. Yeah. So, uh, man, I, I was helping somebody else yesterday. Was that was that you, Rick? It was Rick, I think. Um, where the the, the good old rule of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> if it's not, if it's working, if you've got a Tasma device or even, I mean, I guess Home Assistant's not quite the same because we do get a lot of new features consistently with there. But if if your Tasmotized device is working, don't update it. Don't go to, you know, if it's, if it's working on 5.14, don't go to 6.4 just because it's available. Uh, the likelihood that it's going to add any feature that's going to be significant uh, for you, for the, a device that's already working, is minimal. It's most likely it's not going to add anything to what you're already doing. So, and and it the likelihood that it will cause you problems is fairly high. <laughs> so, and that's not because it's bad software. It's just the nature of you know breaking changes in these kinds of projects. It just happens. So, be ready for that. Um. All right, should be able to find MQT command strict in the wiki. Oh, boop, boop. bunch of stuff just went crazy again. Nope, still no right monitor. Oh well. All right, never update. <laughs> uh, late live notice was your fault. It was getting handshake to rip your, oh, handbrake to rip the Blu-rays. Oh yeah knee deep into that project. Oh yeah. I, I could understand that. I, I spent so much time yesterday working on, I guess we could talk about that next. Um, motor control, Wi-Fi motor control. Let's solve it as a community. We're not gonna be able to do it today, but, um, so what I tried yesterday and spent a lot of time on was connecting, uh, was I have Tasmoda on a node MCU and I had a motor controller. I guess, I don't know if it does any good to show you these things or not, but I guess I can show you my tangled mess of goodiness here. Um, 
It's a different motor controller than you had, Rob, in your blinds video. Um, that button. There we go. It's reversed or something. There we go. So this motor controller here, it's the D, DRV, DRV something, DRV8825. This guy. Yep, that's the guy. So this is the motor controller that I tried using. Get this out of the way. This is the motor controller that I, I tried using and um, it didn't work. It, it worked, but I don't know if it's the controller's fault. It's probably not the controller's fault. Hey, Carlo, H bridge or stepper driver? Uh, stepper, this should be a stepper driver. This should be a stepper driver. And the way I had it, the way I have it connected, um, I got the motor to spin. So how can I show you everything that I had? I probably can't anymore because I took it all apart. But I'll tell you about it. So what I had was Tasmoda on a Node MCU. I had um, one of, I mean, there's only, I, I guess there's a recommended pin to use as PWM. I now I'm sure Rob and maybe Travis and some of you guys are gonna be able to pipe in and give us some uh, better information about this than I am able to give right now. But essentially I took one of the pins, called it PWM, and uh, sent that to the um, to the uh, speed pin on this on this controller. Do I have the diagrams up still? I probably still have the diagrams. Yeah. So right here. So this is I had it wired up like this. Um, the problem was I for a direction pin I tried using just the. Uh, a switch. What I was able to do was when I slid the dimmer on the on Tasmoda, I slid the dimmer and the motor would spin. But it didn't matter how far I slid the dimmer, it spun the same speed. And never switched directions. So uh, what I ended up then I tried. So that was a, a failure. I spent hours trying to get that to work and it didn't didn't do the the job and I looked through there's a lot of posts on Tasmoda uh, about using you know about using motors like here's a nice this is a nice little summary about a guy saying this is what we would love to have right motor support in Tasmoda and here's a bunch of you know suggested uh, functions and such I'm not sure that's ever going to happen um, it's probably going to end up being best to just use not only different firmware, but probably a different chip, right? So this is what Rob's going to say. And a couple of people have suggested this as well. The best, it's probably not best to try and run these motors with the uh, ESP8266, not when you have the 32s available. So probably the thing to do is going to be work on getting, uh, getting it working with an ESP32. I even tried Rob's, um, I even tried Rob's setup. And that's actually what I have here right now is a Node MCU. This one has Rob's blinds sketch on it and um, a stepper motor and this motor controller which has essentially the same connections as that controller that you were using Rob it's just not quite as fancy or um, expensive this is what I had on hand but it still has the enable pin and a, and a step pin and a direction pin um, but I couldn't get anything out of it I tried sending the I tried sending the um, MQTT commands to make it move and I got nothing. Oh, that's over here. I got nothing. So this is the call to the community. Let's 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 find or make something like Tasmoda, where you can you you can set it up in AP mode right off the bat. You can go in and change things. You want to be able to change like the number of steps per revolution and the. Um, I guess the direction, I don't know, you know, you, you need to be able to tell it in the, in this firmware, what your motor, what you want your motor to do, what your motor is, maybe what motor controller you're using, get your, um, and get it so that you can as easily as we can change 
uh, a switch or turn LEDs a different color or whatever in Tasmoda, I want to be able to just as easily be able to turn a motor in one direction, a certain number of turns and in another direction, a certain number of turns and stop at a certain point. Um, I know it's asking a lot, but it's possible and it would be amazingly useful. I think I share, uh, the link I shared is the stepper motor driver I use for the robot. Oh, cool. Randy, where did you share it in this and it didn't, and it blocked it. Sorry, man. Drop it in discord. Drop it in discord and we'll, we'll pass it on here. Just need to know what the application for the motor and size is. Pretty sure I could make something work. Oh, MK, awesome. Yeah, that's right. MK is a star with all this stuff. Um, well, here's the, here's the question then, MK. What about something that is customizable? Something where we can, we can give it data after the fact, like post-compiling, right? So we want to, we want to compile the sketch. We want to put it on the board, the control board, the ESP32 or whatever we decide is the best choice. And then after that, after it's on there, we want to be able to say, okay, this is a stepper motor and we want it to do this many revolutions and it's this many steps per revolution or whatever. Or you can say, or another option to say, well, this is a servo and I want it to spin this direction, you know, a hundred, a hundred times around or whatever. You know what I mean? Is that kind of thing possible? How much work did that, would that take? Cause that would be really awesome. Yeah, Rob's is Rob's is similar. Rob's does Rob's does some of that stuff. Once you've compiled, Rob's you have to do it. Except you have to do it. I don't say before you compile, but once you've set it, then you have to like reflash to do it again, right, Rob? Like the the revolutions to go um, for all the way closed and all the way open. You set that at the beginning. If you you go to AP mode, you put in your your Wi-Fi stuff, your MQTT stuff, and then you set how many revolutions for it to go all the way up or down. And then after that set, you're done, right? If you wanted to change that, like use that for a different uh, motor or something, you'd have to, you'd have to reflash that, which is no big deal. You could do that again. Um, but, and then I didn't, I didn't, was not, didn't have success doing this. It was hours into it. So maybe my mind was just shot at that point And I probably made a simple mistake. Uh, and that's why it wouldn't work, but I couldn't get it to go. But I really want to. There's a motor shield for the Wemos D1 Mini. Squalazo. Ah, maybe that's what I need. Just do that. Programmed for curtains. I haven't released it yet, but it's mostly done. Oh, okay, cool, Rob. Cool. So, I yeah, I was trying to use your one that you had, um, you know, when you did your blinds video was the one I was working with. Um, and the reason, here's here's what I want to do. I want, I would like to have one firmware and maybe it's not possible. Maybe I'm asking too much. One firmware that I could use to do a roller curtain like Rob's, because I do have some places where I just want a roller, a curtain to just come down, roll down and roll up. But then I also want, I also have some of those slat blinds where I think a servo might be better to do some of those, you know, tilt them open and closed. Um, but if I could run it on the same board, the same control board, that would be great. And then, and, and go up and down, right? Because those, those uh, blinds go up and down as well. So surely not put a kill switch in a, in the start of the travel or am I being silly? Um, I would, I, yeah, you could do that. You're talking about having like an end stop switch remodel. You're talking about having an end stop switch on the, um, on the blinds. And that might be, that might be a necessary thing. It's probably a good option to have if we're talking about building some kind of cool firmware to do this. Um, having an option for a, a switch that would, make it stop when that switch is hit would be a good thing probably. But, um, yeah, I'm dreaming. That's what I'm doing. I'm just saying, Hey, this is, wouldn't this be great if we had this and just see what we can come up with as a community. Then you can do OTA mode and code on the slave. Oh, scan send config using MQTT. There's, there's also the problem with the different stepper motors acting slightly different. You'd need different driver files for each of the different motor controller stepper drivers. Okay. So there's obviously some stuff I don't know very well about this, but something we could, right? There's, there's some options out there. I didn't see who, who, who sent me the, Hey, from Holland. How's it going? Is this for the turret gun, Gary? Uh, maybe I would use it for the turret gun. Yeah. I don't know. The turret gun kind of got, I haven't gotten it back out again. Works great to drive stepper drivers can get 50% duty 
and vary the frequency for the motor speed. So curmudgeon has been working with ESP32. I, okay, so what I need to get is ESP32. Please check my email Tony sent me. Oh, okay. How about I do it off the, off the screen? Do you guys want to see my email? Don't skip. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're a dreamer too. I want everything automated, including the wife. Oh, <laughs> the Stepford wife. You want a Stepford wife remodel? Remember that movie? <laughs> oh. Better late than never, Kenny. Good morning. Alejandro, what kind of motor will be suggested from a torque point of view? Alejandro, if you want torque, if you want to lift something heavy, a stepper is the way to go. You guys all concur there? If you want light duty, just you know, turning a small, simple thing, a servo is simple and easy um, and low voltage. But if you want, uh, if you want something that's going to go, you know, lift your blinds or something, it's going to have to be a stepper, and probably a geared stepper that uh, can really generate a good amount of torque. Whoa, hardtop! What are you saying? If you use a stepper motor, I like anything you used in a nuclear power plant. Sounds like good to me. <laughs> what am I got? What am I doing over here? See, look, I was I was going through Rob's blog here. All right. Uh, we must motor shield ESP easy. Okay, Squalazo, I'm on it. I've probably told you this before, man, but I, your game, your uh, I don't say gamer tag, but your name tag is like the best. Squalazo. What did you use in pan, tilt, zoom cameras in the nuclear power plant? You can just count rev revelations and steps. Maybe add an in switch for calibration. Yeah. Yeah, steppers. I, I think probably for a lot of it, I would use steppers too. I got Sonoff Home Assistant add-on working today and it works great. Yeah, awesome, Richard. That's fantastic. Which power plant? <laughs> oh, really? Ooh, five RPM DC motors. Oh, really? Five RPMs. That's slow. Extreme. Wow, that's cool, Rob. You got links for that? How do you have time to do all this? I say that. Isn't that funny that I, as much as I do, Rob, you have, you know, job and teaching and how do you have time to do all this stuff? Seeing geared stepper up to 100 to 1, but that's going to be slow. Yeah. The problem with just uh, counting steps is that there's no guarantee that the motor actually moved those steps. True that. Only that it attempted to. That's true. That's true. Is, now there's some kind of feedback in some cases, isn't there? I don't know if that's a controller thing or a motor thing, but I have seen where there's some kind of feedback stuff, right? Where you can, like if it skipped a step or missed a step, it would tell you, hi, baby. How's it going? Hi, baby. What time is it? Is it already getting time? We're having too much fun this morning. You just did gymnastics. You just did gymnastics? Good. Are you editing? Servos have, oh, okay, servos have feedback. Yeah, we're live, baby. We're on TV. Ooh. Yeah, we're on TV. People are watching. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> no sleeping. Yeah, that's that's my solution as well. Set up a sonoff component today as well for your in-laws. Nice, Jeff. Awesome. Big funny shark. Squalazo means big funny shark. That's awesome. <laughs> Added your Twitch feed to the live show announcements on Discord. Should get you a few viewers. Thanks, MK. Would be nice if YouTube API allowed for such integration. For sure. MK, let's let's connect. I know we've talked about it before, but we need to do a we need to get you on here. And uh, if you do any live streams, let, I mean if you're, if you're gonna, or even if you just want to put on our calendar when you uh, are going to release a video. Rob, same for you. you could, I gave you the thing. I don't know if maybe got lost in an email, but the, um, you know, we got the calendar. The calendar is for stream events, for video release events, for uh, uh, updates, for home assistant and such. Um, I think it can be a pretty useful thing. So MK, hit, message me in Discord and we'll, we will, uh, sorry, I got distracted, Tony. We'll get you, we'll get worked out so that you can be on here with us at some point. MK, let's do, let's find this. Tony says, promise you these weeks, but it's been a hectic car. Wow. Oh, that's right. You made your own. 
cool. So this is, so you guys know Tony, Tony Lamont, recovering from heart surgery. He designed and built a, a his own little flashing board here. So this is awesome. I'm excited. Okay, so when uh, when these come, Tony, you'll have to, and you're gonna have these, are you selling these or what's, uh, how are you making these available? That's amazing, man. That's really nice. So we'll have some reliability and some consistency in our FTDI. Thank you. That's fantastic. We'll have to get you on here to explain that too. Glad you're doing, glad you're recovering, man. Closed loop motors have a feedback you're talking about. Servos are closed loop motors. Steppers can have it added, but they aren't closed loop by default. Thank you, Idaho Joe. See, I learned some things, right? I, I, I got it. I learned a few things. I read a lot of stuff and some of it sticks. Streams haven't been scheduled lately. Just impromptu. Okay. That's all right. Al Marcano, how's it going, man? Got to order a new FTDI soon, I think, if fried mine. Yeah, probably, Kenny. I'm I'm amazed mine's lasted as long as it has. It's been over a year and I've it's still going, still working. And it was just the first one I bought. I just got lucky. I know a lot of people have bought they buy them in packs because they they die often. So Zoe, you can look in there if you want. But you had one. <laughs> uh, how about that Sonoff SV LED when in flash mode? Continuous, three flashed, slow, quick flash, green, red. What? I missed something there, hardtop. TV and add in home assistant. Yeah, Gert and Tavi's got you right. I think you probably want an IR blaster, one of those um, broad link. Uh, RM devices. It's going to be your best bet. Something like this. Yeah, and that's true. Some smart TVs have an API. That's right. That's right. You can look and see in Home Assistant if your TV has a, has a, a component. It may. Thank you, sweetie. Close the door, okay? What should the flash pattern look like? Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. And Aza, I like this mini because it doesn't have the um, RF. And I had troubles. I did a video about that one. I had troubles with the RF on the pro. So, but the mini worked very well. Ah, Samsung TV isn't supported well in 0 0.74. All right. What else is happening, fellas? What else should we chat about? What else should we look at? Let's look at this. Uh, I wanted to look at this, this D1 mini shield here. So this is the D1 mini shield. New firmware compatible with the old one. Okay. Okay. What kind of motor are we talking about here? Is this just a DC motor that this thing runs? How can I help you, you sweetheart? The circle light? I don't know where it went, my dear. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. All right. Something to keep in mind. The original Wemo D1 Mini Shield was broke and didn't work at all. 
There are firmware plus hardware mods you can apply to fix it, but you but if you get old stock, it might not work. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Don't have BT set up on your home system. DC motor only, I think. No steppers or servos. Okay. Well, I mean, DC motor is better than nothing, I suppose. I do. I, I think that, to me, that's my next, my next big frontier is controlling, <clears throat> excuse me, controlling motors and things, moving things. So we've, you know, we got switches on and off. We've got lights, making sounds, uh, doing a lot of things, sensors, lots of sensor inputs coming in. But the next step I want to take is I want to move things. I want, yeah, Emmy was saying you need an automatic door shutter, right? I need to shut the door sometimes. I want my blinds to go up and down, you know. Um, I know Alion was working on, he was trying to make a deadbolt. He was trying to modify a deadbolt lock with a, with a motor. Yes, you can buy those, right? We can all buy that. We can buy any of this stuff. That's not the point. <laughs> the point's not, can I go buy one of these things? Does it exist? The point is, I want to make it. Right. For the challenge of making it, for the fun of making it and for the you know, the thrill of the success um, when there is success, which every once in a while there isn't, I suppose. But that's the point. The point is doing it yourself. So Alian was making a deadbolt at it with a with a stepper motor and trying to slide a stepper motor or trying to slide the bolt across, you know, by turning the motor um, with a whatever firmware and, and et cetera. So moving things is my next big frontier when it comes to automation stuff so uh let's see what else we got here WI. you can get a butler <laughs> i can't get a butler i have i have a bunch of kids and they don't uh, they uh, they help a lot <laughs> i don't want to say they don't the drawbridge on the kids castle you're right bobby that thing's heavy as can be too so that would take some serious serious pull power Ikea is going to be releasing some tad-free compatible roller blinds in 19. Oh, cool. Thank Manu Manu. Thanks, man. I did see, um, we're going to refresh the viewers too. I did see uh, somebody's, th there is a, a DIY. Somebody posted how to make those blinds uh, move up and down. Have a look at this tweet. Okay, sweet. If it'll let send in Discord. Okay, yeah. Uh, Ooh, what's this? Awesome. Okay. One step closer. Okay, we've got, I got to check this out. MQTT controlled roller blinds. Cool. See what that must be his motor controller right there. Okay, I'll look into that. Does he have a website? Do you remember how the LED flash went in flash mode? You may want to contact him. Okay, yeah, I can, for sure. New with Home Assistant, installed yesterday. Anyone with a good, basic, simple Node-RED tutorial? There are a few. Um, you can watch the live stream I did uh, last week where like I'm pretty new to node red as well. So we went through some really basics and I was asking some questions that were just general. Hey, I don't know how this works. You know, help me do some basic things. Um, but also the hookup Rob has, uh, some node red tutorials and digi blur DIY. Travis has some node red tutorials that are good for a beginning. Get your hands on some of these. What do you got here, Rob? Ooh. Oh, is this those? This is these high torque DC motors. Worm gear motor, 12 volt high torque reduction gearbox. Awesome. You know what? Actually, that might be. So I got these new, I got this thing in my garage. Did I tell you guys about that? 
I'm gonna I'm making a video about it because they asked, um, they asked me to do one. But it, the, it's a it's a shelf system in the garage that you know you, you mount it to the wall. It's got this rack, and then it's got shelves on it, and then it's got a motor in it, and it'll move the shelves up and down, right? And it's a pretty simple motor, but something like this, yeah, I like that. That's a great idea. And then because you just oh, this is interesting. So the magic is all happening in this gearbox right here. This is interesting. I do need to find some of these to play with. So what do you what would you use for a controller on this? I can't see the connections there very well, but Rob, what do you what would uh, what would you use for a controller on that? What kind of blinds do I want to open, Paul? I I would have first the slap blinds, I think. I want to try those, but the but then roller blinds, kind of like what Rob had. Check your email again. Thank you, Tony. Oh wow! Oh yeah, I remember those. Oh, that would be great, Tony. That would be great because I have I do need to play with some ESP thirty twos. Thank you, brother. That would be fantastic. That would be fantastic. That looks really cool. I love the way you broke out the the pins here. These are Tony made these also. So this is an ESP32. Tony's an ESP32 master. And then he's got break the pins all broke out out in here and th designed all this himself. So that would be great, Tony. I would be very excited. 32s are so much easier to work with. Yeah, well, let's let's start making the transition. Slats are easier. Raising the entire blinds is a different ball game. Yeah, I bet. Let's see. Breadboard friendly, yeah. Wiper motors have gobs of torque. Oh, really? Like like your windshield wiper motors? Huh. Those are 12 volt motors, huh? Probably cheap. Get those at the junkyard, heck. <laughs> you guys can, Kenny, uh, you and Hardtop can work it out in Discord. You guys can connect to each other in Discord pretty easy. Okay, some more Discord messages. Discord messages, Discord messages. Awesome. What do we got here? Still don't have a better way to figure out the smart device is worth by buying, filling the database. Oh, interesting. That is interesting. Yes, I've seen, so I've seen kind of kits like this. I've seen kits like this. Um, I don't know what that's about. I've seen kits like this and, and I like the idea and maybe it's cheap enough to do, but I would want to be able to, you know, control this with home assistant. I would like it to automate, et cetera. So I don't know what's, I don't know what's happening in this remote control or how this is working. Is it RF or it's probably RF would be my, my guess, but yeah, these kinds of things aren't, are, are a good idea. They're not, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, I definitely, definitely want to get my hands on some of those, Rob. I'll have to, I'll have to do that fairly soon. And 10 revolutions per minute is not too terribly slow. Awesome. 100 pounds plus per one foot torque on some motors. Wow. Doc prefers password sharing rather than email address sharing. <laughs> well, that's a great idea. Wiper motors with an old DC, with an old uh, PC power supply. That's a good idea. Though they're RF, yeah, okay. Those things don't make sense if you have purchased the blinds to fit them. The part of the part of the issue is blinds aren't cheap, right? Uh, maybe those, maybe like the IKEA flat roller blinds are are not too bad. And Rob Rob had those um, blinds from Amazon that weren't too bad. Uh, but my house already has blinds in it, so I don't want to replace the blinds. I just want to motorize them. So I've got these slat blinds that I want to 
you know, be able to control, be able to motorize. So how do I, how do I best do that? I do have some windows where I am going to, you know, put a curtain and I want those motorized, but, um, wiper motors score low on the WAF. I'll bet they do. <laughs> Sun is about to come up here. So I need to install more Shelly's today. <laughs> all right. Get on it, Tony. You, have you installed all 30 of yours yet? Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, I'm glad we're talking about motors. I think we got some good solutions, things to work on here. Controller used for the blind raising contraption. So is this a D1 mini thing, Paul? No, it's not. What is this? I, that's interesting. <laughs> About 20 having problems. Oh no. How do I want to power it? I don't, I wouldn't mind powering it with, with regular power, Michael, you know, uh, plugging it into the wall. I think that would be, that would be acceptable in my situation. Um, solar power would be nice, uh, but that's not, that's not a must for, for my application necessarily. What do I want to do with the motors? Mostly raise blinds, raise blinds. And then I'd, I'd like just the freedom to be able to do whatever I want. Like, so uh, over the summer, when we did that maker fair, I had these fun ideas for doing uh, little quests, like having little interactive things that kids could do. And even adults would enjoy doing, you know, um, where the, like escape rooms and stuff. But, uh, in those situations would be really cool to make things move. But you've got like, I've got this knight, this big knight armor suit in my office. Wouldn't it be cool if I can make his arms move, make his head spin, make his mouth open and close? Um, you know, things like that. Have a, have a statue in your house that can turn or, or move and tilt based on other things. So I kind of want, I, I, Right now, the most immediate application is blinds. That's what I want first. But I do want the freedom and the ability to be able to control motors, you know, through Wi-Fi, through Home Assistant, through automations, Node Red, whatever, uh, with with full freedom. <laughs> Let's say it that way: with full freedom. I want to be able to just do it. The Motorite IKEA. Yes, this is the one. Thank you, Remco. This is the one that I have seen that I have considered strongly um using because he what he did was made he's got a i think it's a printer stepper motor or something right no no those are just dc motors that's not what he used for that though is it maybe it is you know no he uses stepper this is stepper motor so he uses one of these flat stepper motors and uh, he's got an in, an in stop switch there and a node MCU. So this might be, you know, a good solution for something. But the other thing, when I was looking at this, he uses, so he does use MQTT, but he uses like the native uh, Lua firmware on the node MCU. And I guess that's, I, I'd have to learn a bit more about doing that. But uh yeah, this is the this is the concept. I would like something else running on the Node MCU besides this, probably. Something a little bit easier, a little bit less program heavy. But I haven't tried this. Maybe this isn't so bad. I've I've looked at it a few times, but I haven't tried it. So maybe I need to just bear down and and give it a go, right? Give it a try. Stop whining. Quit your dang whining, boy. <laughs> uh, car seat motor. Oh, that would be cool. YouTube showing a guy using a wiper motor to lift a hundred pound bucket of bolts. Wow. Oh, I think that instructable says he doesn't have enough torque. Yeah. You need to build this. Okay. <laughs> Here you go. There you go. <laughs> I, I would like, so I'm building my, my bug, right? My electric bug. And, uh, I want to have some fun with it. 
it's one of those things my wife said I can just do whatever I want with. And those are, those are rare. <laughs> so I want to be able to do some fun stuff. Like I want it to, I want to make it look like a, um, I want to make it look like a, a bomber, which is kind of a funny thing for a Volkswagen, but that's a, anyways. So I want to, I want to make some moving stuff in there too. I want some, I want to make my turn signals look like little guns or something and make a move or spin or something. So there's a lot of different applications I want to be able to, I want to be able to better understand and be able to control motors in all variety of ways. All right, let's look at, let's look at what Paul's been sending me. And then should we roll a couple, you guys want to roll a couple of, a uh, couple more sticker winners? Let's roll a couple sticker winners and then we'll probably sign off here pretty soon. All right. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Oh, look at that. Okay. This is what Paul's sending me. Oh, okay. So this is Paul's setup. Oh, okay. So you've just got it pulling the string. So you're using your... Oh, this is interesting. So this whole motor gearbox thing is something you bought. And then it's spinning, it's pulling the string, and that this is what's controlling your blinds. Like that. Cool. And this is what you're using to do that with. This is your motor controller for that. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. This is what you need if you already have the blinds. Okay, Emmy, thank you. Let's see what we got here. Oh, I guess, yeah, well, uh, I have the slap blinds, you know. But this is, so this is one, this will pull, this will pull on the chain. Pulling my chain. I want this. I can't scroll this link. Proof of concept could make it work cool. Stickers. Yeah, let's do some sticker giveaways. I think actually there were, I, I didn't get, um, there was a couple guys who won on the sticker thing last time that uh, I didn't get um, a message from yet. So I don't, uh oh, what's happening? So I haven't, I haven't sent those off. And then I still have the switch plates, a couple switch plates to get in the mail. Hey, Dale. This, this link broke, Emmy. I don't know what happened. It was working for a second. Bro had automated blinds. He did. Did you see his automated blinds? He had like a he had like a syringe and a string and it spun. I mean it was it was and it was it needed some it needs some um it needs some work. <laughs> but I'm I applaud him for doing it. I actually should look at his firmware though, shouldn't I? I don't know what he was using for, maybe he probably wrote a sketch or something. Stickers, stickers, stickers. Yes, let's do stickers. Let's do stickers. Now that I said it, I got to figure it. I got to remember how we did that. We did it through, we did it through, uh, re, not, was it through Restream? Was it through... Stickers? Stickers? Oh, what did we use? Was it in here? Oh, that's... No, it still doesn't include uh, Twitch people, unfortunately. How did I do that? Isn't that funny? I can't remember already how to do it. It's not funny, actually. Get your... Junk together, disease, for goodness sakes. All right. What was it we used? It wasn't... It was in the... Oh, was it the Nightbot? That's what it was. I think it was the Nightbot. Nightbot. Sounds so cool. <laughs> All right. Frank can do the... Frank can do the giveaways on the Twitch one. I got to get my, uh, <laughs> all right, giveaways. Okay, here we go. We're going to put, 
everybody here, active users, anybody who has been in the last 15 minutes, has been active in the last 15 minutes, and I see a whole bunch of eligible users popping up. So I'll give you a few minutes. There we go. I'll keep it going for a few minutes here. All right, stickers, 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 stickers. <laughs> One step to your CNC machine, yeah. That's, you know, that's another way to look at it too is I'm, I will at some point build one of those CNC machines. Uh, it'll be a while probably, but I will. I will, I will. So, um, all right. Well, while we're waiting for, while we're giving everybody a couple minutes to join in the sticker fun, what, uh, what are we going to do next? So we, this, I didn't put in a, um, a poll for a topic for this one. Obviously I, I, I was just interested in motors and that plug strip. And so I started working on that. I still want to do this, uh, you know, build my, rebuild my battery pack and use my new fancy battery spot welder. So that should be fun times. We'll probably do that at some point pretty soon. Um, I know a lot, a lot of people were asking for Grafana last time, Influx DB and Grafana. So I'll try and put something together for that. We, I did it once. And I'll need to go back through it, but uh, we'll, we'll get that on here. Um, and yeah, you can expect for sure that the streams will continue Sundays. And then I will, I'll put one on during the week. I'll do something during the week. It'll be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at some point. I don't know exactly when, but I'll try and get it. Um, I'll try and get it posted as soon as I know when it's going to be. Did I ever get my blinds set up? Not yet, Warlock. That's what we were talking about. Docker Home Assistant Install Tech Talk. Oof. Not sure I'm going to be able to do that one. Strickets, strickets. What is that, Adrian? <laughs> uh, 18650. Did I get a BMS? I haven't really got a BMS. I've got, I've got a, um, you know, I've got that battery go thing. I've got this guy. Uh, so it tells me if they're balanced or not balanced. And I don't know if this works, you know, with the charger, but I, I was in the, um, I was in Jehu's Facebook group asking some questions about a charger that would do balancing on a seven S pack. Does that make sense? Seven, seven batteries, seven of these 18650 batteries in series would be a seven S battery um, pack with the, um, balancing capabilities and they, and I got some recommendations, so I'll get one, but I, for the BMS just released a BMS for his setup. Oh, really? I didn't see that. Oh, cool. I have to watch him. Happy Sunday. Hey, Demps. How's it going? Wayne question. How many relays have you been able to run off a of node MCU with Tasmoda at one time? Uh, seven Wayne. I've been able to successfully run seven. Um, I could, I think I might've gotten to eight, but one of them would, um, yeah, you have to be careful about which pins you put it on because some pins, if they're high or low, when the board reboots, you get, um, you get a disruption, you get an error. So, but I have had seven working even with seven. I think it just clicks. I got it. I, one of the relays would just click once. I can't remember which one it was. So I didn't see Dang. Dave. Hey, thanks, Dave. All right. Working on automation for ground foes, comfort valve on your hot water heater. Speaking of motors and to get in the sticker drawing. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Uh, what's Frank working on? What's he got up here? Was in his last live stream. Let's see. Hey, Matheson. Paul says, ooh, Paul said a lot of stuff. D1 Mini connected to that motor, which would turn on and off the motor, forward and reverse as well. Read switches the top of the windows to detect when it's up and down. Node red would turn the motor on based on she who shall not be named. Uh, audible command, the motor would start rising as soon as the upper limit was reached. D1 would send the MQTT answers. Okay. Not too pretty, but it actually worked. That's actually, that's a pretty good concept. I mean, there's a, you got, you got, you've checked a lot of the required boxes there, Paul. That's not a, that's a good project. Some of the guy was 
Oh, good. Yes, he does. Rob's got a good video about the different pins and what you can and can't use them for on the 8266 and the 32, don't you? I think you talked about the 32 some in there as well. Must say hi, secret place in Estonia. Rarely as I get to see you live. Thanks. Thanks, Margus Veer. Appreciate that, man. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you guys being here. Building an ad on the stream tonight in 45 minutes. That's right. Frank will be on next. Oh, and I wanted to say next week, got your channel loaded waiting you, sir. Okay, cool. Next week uh, on the Sunday stream, we'll, won't be at this time. It'll be a little bit later. So um, that's just our schedule in the mornings changes this, this year. So uh, I won't be able to start until a little bit after 11, 11, 1130, but that'll give us an hour and then it'll probably an hour and a half ish. And then it'll probably end right about the time that Frank starts. And then you can watch Frank for five or six more hours. Cause when Frank streams, he streams, <laughs> it's none of this. Oh, I'm going to stream for an hour, you know, like a little wussy Dr. Z style. I'm going to stream for half the day. <laughs> okay. It has eight relay options, hard to add more. Not sure what the limit on the GPIOs. Yeah. The problem, Chris, comes when, because you start to get, um, you start to get triggering of problems when you reboot. So, all right. Best video, video for pins. Yep. Reference it often. Yep. And I think if you type in, what is it? Is it, oh, well, here. Oops. Commandas. That's not going to work. <laughs> and then this will give you a uh, this will tell you uh, what commands you can do squirrel <laughs> what commands you can do uh, and Rob's got Rob's channel is is linked in there as well so if, I can't remember if it's the hookup or what it is but maybe I'll do some Q&A Dr. Z sessions next year <laughs> are there any Balkan people probably Appreciate you sitting there. Not 100% sure I can fix your issue, but I can try to help. Not in Discord now. Okay, there you go. Okay, great. All right, so we got 72 people entered into the sticker, sticker, stickers. And I think it's time we roll it. Are you ready? Last chance, 10 more seconds to get your name in if you haven't. If you haven't texted anything in in the last 15 minutes, do it now, do it now. And we'll roll it, we'll roll two. Sound good? We'll roll two and two, and then um, if you are the winner, message me in Discord and uh, I'll put you on the list and we'll get some stickers out. Sound good? Stickers? Stickers? <laughs> We're giving away stickers. Stickers are fun and easy to give away. Everybody's got those water bottles and whatever now. It'll be fun. Whoa, whoa, look at all that sticker, sticker, stickers. Woo. Okay. I'm glad I gave you guys an extra couple minutes. We went from 71 to 83. Now the new year comes to an end. Looking back at the past year, what's the most memorable home automation thing for you? Thank you, Frank. That's a very thoughtful question. Um, wow. Looking back at this past year, what has been the most memorable home automation or home assistant thing for me? Um, this has been a huge year for me in, um, I don't know, just kind of becoming part of this community. I think that's, that's been a big deal. Um, you know, hitting, it was a year ago that I had maybe 10 or 15 videos on YouTube and, and I think it was right around December where we ended up with, um, like a thousand subscribers or something like that. And so, to have gone from that, you know, some goofball with a green screen, making videos about how to burn your house down <laughs> to get to this point now where, you know, I can click on the live stream and 250 people are watching. Um, that's pretty great. And that's honestly, that's because of home assistant. Like I, I found something that I was interested in and, uh, and started putting out some content and people, other people are also interested in it. So we just built this really fun community. So the 12 streams of Christmas was very memorable. I think some specific things that were memorable, um, getting the toilet 
<laughs> the toilet automation was a memorable, fun thing to do. The couple of maker fairs were both pretty fun to, to, to get out there and physically uh, build something and meet some people and do, do some of those things were fun. Favorite automation is still, um, is still the, uh, HA switch, the, the HA uh, MQTT car presence is still my favorite project. And it's still the one that is the most useful and the most reliable. And, and, uh, so that's the one. Uh, the point where you email and password on GitHub, God, the Twitter phone number thing. Oh man, come on. That was ridiculous. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Uh, there was a, there was a few live streams, a few, uh, accidental live streams that were a lot of fun, especially when I didn't know I was live streaming. <laughs> that was fun. Um, uh, that was fun. Uh, your passwords. Yes. The, what is this? They look pretty. Oh, what do we got here? Stickers, stickers, stickers. All right. We got 101 eligible users. Let's do it. Stickers over my eyes. Oh, did you, what? Oh, we could do that. Let's do, let's do the mask. We'll do a mask. That's not real. Oh, it's not doing it now. That must've been when that thing, whatever happened and, oh, there it goes. Oh, mistletoe. Oh, 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 oh thanks. Oh, I'm getting kissed. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, I can't breathe when I laugh. Oh man, that's funny. Uh, when do you, where do you enter? So all you have to do to enter is uh, for stickers is just type something in the chat and then you're, you're, you're eligible for the sticker thing. It's just a fun little thing to do uh, during the stream. So, and I think everybody's in now, Matheson, Dr. Z's HA kits. I don't know about that. I haven't done that. that would be fun. The Twitter phone was fun. Yeah. First time I've texted someone in the U S <laughs> send you a new email. If you found the one. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you, Nemo. All right, let's, let's roll this strictors thing and let's get, uh, let's get cranking on this. So Frank can get his stream up too. All right. Everybody's in 109 eligible, 110. Still waiting for your stickers from Frank. Oh, he, he's been selling, he's been uh, packaging them up. He's been packaging them up. Okay, here we go. Drum roll. And rolling, James, James Chalupata, Palapuca. I like that name. That's awesome. Okay. The house tour was fun too. The house tour was a lot of fun. All right. So James is our first one. I love your little emoji thing there, James. That's awesome. So there's Nightbot says, James, you won the giveaway. So message me in Discord with your address and such, and I will get some stickers to you. Um, wherever you are, doesn't matter. You can be in Australia or wherever. Oh, well, let's do this for Frank. <laughs> Go out with a bang. <laughs> All right, let's do one more sticker giveaway. You guys ready? Ready, 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 ready? One more sticker giveaway. Javier Roques. Javier, congratulations. Here's some lightning for you. <laughs> and since it's 4th of July, we'll just do some. That was fun. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Let's have the kitties come in. Come on in, kitties. That was fun, guys. So, uh, heavy piece of fireworks you got there. Yeah. Pretty nice. All right. So, Everybody, thanks for being here again. Uh, we got through some good stuff today. We got through some, um, we went through that plug strip. I think that was fun. I think we did a lot of troubleshooting. Oh, Ikafar wants, to, wants us all to remember El Luchador. El Luchador. <laughs> um, so it's been a fantastic year. This has, this has been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot. I've made a lot of really cool friends. So, and you're all them. So thanks. Uh, it's been a great, it's been a great time. It's been a great ride. I can't wait to see what happens in the next year. Uh, who knows where we'll, we'll, where we'll end up, what we'll end up doing, but, uh, it's been a lot of fun and I've had a great time and I appreciate, uh, all your help, all your help to me, all your help to each other. Um, it's been a great community. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy new year to you. Kitties, let's do it. Zoe, come on. <laughs> I just did my belt. 
Oh, he just did your bow? Oh, it broke. It broke? Yep. Oh, let's get it fixed. Yeah. All right. Come on over here. Oh, I'm so sorry, baby. Showing the stickers so you have... Oh, uh, I do need to show some stickers. So we'll, uh, as soon as I as soon as I print some, <laughs> as soon as I print some, I'll put uh, I'll put some pictures on Discord so you can see what what stickers we're talking about and all that stuff. Yeah. So, happy New Year, everybody! Dempsey, you rock too, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah. Subbed and bell clicked. You're an inspiration. Oh, thanks, remodel. Thanks. Me and Holly just got out. Oh, Dawson's not been feeling good. He'd been sick. Alrighty. Well, hey, everybody. We'll be uh, we'll be streaming again later in the week. Stick around if you haven't gone to Frank's. Frank, put your uh, link in the chat. You know the little so exclamation point, come. Frank, or whatever, and so that everybody knows your channel. Because Frank's going to be streaming, doing some add-on stuff on Twitch next. I guess it's Twitch and YouTube. And then uh, have a great New Year's. Be safe. Don't be don't be crazy. We're all too old to be crazy. Uh, those days are past. If we survived those years, we're, we're we're now much more mature and responsible in our celebrations. But uh, maybe we'll do something on New Year's. I could do I could do a New Year's stream. That'd be fun. What time is it? I'll have to, maybe we'll stream for Australian New Year's, right? Because aren't you guys the first ones to get it? Anyways. All right, guys. Let's do it. You ready? Zoe's not coming. Zoe's not coming. Okay. You guys can do it when you're ready. Uh, oh, no, no, no. You have to do it with some enthusiasm. <laughs> you got it? Okay. Do it, do it with, like it's fun. As always, thanks for watching. And till next. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good New Year's. Maybe maybe I'll do a New Year's Eve stream or New Year's Day. That'll be fun. Take care, everybody. See you a bit. Bye-bye.